Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. It is now time for Inside the Ten. As I welcome Dave Riccio, Brent Reed, yeah. and Andrew Reb Webster. Always good to <laughs> Webster. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten too excited with State of Origin around the oh, corner. Yeah, I'm talking happened. too quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Origin yeah. fever. Yeah, Origin yeah, fever. That's exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> let's hope not. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. Uh, a lot doing with the Dragons at the moment. Uh, should the Illawarra board give Jason Riles whatever he wants and just appoint him? Yes, I think they should. I mean, he's their number one target. He's the guy they want. Uh, they've been locked in talks with him and him alone. Um, they're a long way down the track, although apparently there was a set, setback later in the week. Um, but I just think they should give Rolsey what he wants. Uh, yeah, he's the man they want. He's the man for the job. He's a local guy. He lives down the road. Uh, he's served an apprenticeship. He's been under some of the best co coaches, not only in rugby league, but in rugby union. Give him what he wants and let him, let him do what he has to do. Well, if they don't give him what he wants, he won't be there. He won't be there. Yeah. That's as simple as that. I, I, I'm not as convinced um, Jason Rise will be there. I think it's, I think it's really touch and go, to be honest, on, on whether the Dragons succeed. And it comes down to that football structure in, in Jason being a rookie coach and not, not wanting to go into a, into a club that has a, a, a hardly any history of success bar the, the Premiership. What do you mean, no history of success? At St George of Lawarra, Webby. Oh, please. Well, are we going to get into this debate? Well, well, what, <laughs> well there's structure, some of their parts. There's what, some of their parts. What structure So they've got all that history of St years. George all those years. But I, I agree. I think he deserves to have a huge say in his foot, football department. And I think he deserves the five-year term that he seeks to do the... To, to make some fundamental change there, because that's what they need. With Anthony Griffin, they gave him three years. They were reluctant to give him the job in the first place. It's like they didn't have any other option. And then he was like a dead man walking from within the first two months of his, his tenure. They can't do that, because it's just... You can't succeed when you're looking over your shoulder. I think he has the right to have a big say in his football department, to a point. I don't think a rookie coach can come in and say, well, this is my general manager of football, this is my recruitment manager. He should have a strong say in those yeah. things and they should listen to him. But I don't think that he should be, you know, the, the, the absolute figurehead of the club. He's never coached an this NRL is, match before. This, that's, all, that's all well and good, but this club has no history of being able to actually appoint those people. I know, but this is where... So no, this, this, is the, this is their... Your time to shine, Dragons board. Your time to shine. <laughs> Get the right people in place. So, Rudy, you mentioned there was a setback this week. Do we know yeah. what the setback is? Oh, well, I don't know any what the whispers it was over the length of the deal and the terms of the deal. Because obviously, you're going to get, if you're going to give a coach a five-year deal, you want some ability to walk away. If you need to walk away from that deal at some point, you don't want to have... Say it's after 18 months or two years, you don't have to pay out three years. So I assume it's over... The, not just the length of the deal, but maybe the payout terms if it doesn't work out. Now, you know, I'm sure they'll get through it because, as I said, I think they really want Jason. And I think Jason wants the job. You know, there were question marks early over whether Jason wanted that job, but Jason wants that job. So, if, you know, you've got two point, sides really, who want it. If, if He's not, not going to go in stone cold mm. as the head coach and that's it. And he, he wants a GM of football and a new head of recruitment well, they want, they at want, the club. They, they want a GM of football so and a head of the, recruitment The search as well. is on for who that is. Yeah. If... That if it isn't a, the right fit for Jason, I don't see him taking the job. And you can understand why he would want the long-term yeah, deal as well, yeah, because yeah. it can be, you know, it's his first head coaching role. Yeah. That and that's can... the new, that's the new mm. two-year deal, a five-year. Soraldo got one. You know, that's laid a marker right now. So Riles, he probably thinks. I should get the same it's deal. It's the security. Yeah. Um, all right, well, talking uh, about the Dragons, they obviously did beat the Roosters on the weekend. So are the Roosters officially in crisis? Is Trent Robinson under any pressure at all? Really? As long as Nick Politis is the chairman of that club, I think Trent Robinson will be safe, again, to a point. Because, <laughs> because Nick uh, loves success more than, um, more than any other chairman in the game. And I, I think he'll put up with uh, what's happening at the moment for so long. Um, but they're a quality club with quality players. They're going through a pretty bad patch at the moment. Uh, the, it, but everyone keeps talking about their halves and the style of, of, of football they play. For mine, the most d disturbing thing the last couple of weeks has been their defence. Like, how, how, long have, how long has it been since we've seen a Roosters team defend like the one that's defended the last two weeks? Not, it's been a long time. So I'm sure they'll turn it around. They're a smart club. They've done it before. But um, crisis... Yeah, let's call it a crisis. They're in an injury <laughs> crisis. They're definitely in an injury crisis. In, Joey Manu, Sam Walker, Brandon some, Smith, some sort Victor of Radley will now be sidelined through ju judiciary matters. Uh, Jared Woolery Hargraves missed the other night. They're, they're in an injury crisis, no no doubt. Now, this, is sound, this will sound crazy. I thought they showed something back closer to 
Rooster style of footy in that second half against Saints. I mm. thought they, well, bar four minutes left in the game, they were they were home and hosed. Uh, Tedesco looks as about as close to Teddy as we've seen in a long time. Um, I'm not prepared to write them off yet because, as Webby says, they've got too, too many good players. Mm. But they need to be on the field, and, and they know how to turn it around. Yeah. They have done this before. Yeah. That they've they've had a, a sort of a dry spot, a dry yeah. spell, and then they've been able to I turn. I think they're it two around. wins out of that logjam of teams on 16 yeah. points, aren't they? So you can't throw the baby out with yeah. the bathwater here. And I think the only pressure the trend is under. You liked that, didn't you, the baby out the father? The only pressure Trent's under is the pressure Trent puts, puts on himself right now because we know what he's like. He likes to win. Um, he likes to be successful. And he'd be putting a heap of pressure on himself to turn it around. And, you know, they're a long way from being... I wouldn't put a line through them, put it that way. I know, far I know, from that. Robbo, like, remember the last couple of years when they've had such big injury concerns? I remember talking to Trent Robbins through it and he said, I'm really enjoying the challenge of coaching through this period. Well, this is another big challenge for me. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, across the weekend already, we've seen some absolute howlers from Bunker. Uh, we saw it at Suncorp Stadium with that Reese Walsh situation, uh, the failure to Sinbin Victor Radley, uh, off Hangawi last night, uh, that no try for the Tigers. Does Rugby League have a Bunker problem yet again? Uh, <clears throat> I didn't like how the on-field referee corrected his original decision in that Reese Walsh. I, I, I'm not a fan of that. I, I think that's opening a can of worms when on-field referees are sending it up to the bunker, the technology that the game is invested in, and then during the process of that, coming up with his own solution to the, questioning why he even put it up there yeah, in the first place. Yeah, but it was the right. It was the right outcome in the end. What? So it was good that he actually. <laughs> why send it up in? The, why send it up? Well, that's. You're yeah. like saying here, Danica. We don't have a bunker problem, right? The technology is fantastic. Mm. It does. It, the technology works fine. It's not a bunker problem. It's a bunker. It's, pe- a, bunker it's a people pe- problem. It's a bunker. It's people. a people problem. It's a bunker person. Because the people operating it can't get it right. <laughs> it's not. The issue's not with the bunker. Mm. The technology is fantastic. Is it getting too involved? Do we need to rein it back a, a, a bit? Well, what do you? If what, we, we only use it on tries and we miss incidents of foul play. And I, I don't think we should miss those inc- incidents if they happen. You know, if something happens in back play or the referees miss something happens on Obstruction. the field, the bunker should be allowed to look at it. Mm. They've just got to get it right. But we do also have the match review committee. If there is foul play, if there's a situation like that, they will get punished yeah. after the game. Yeah. Can someone but tell me, what, what do the touch judges do? <laughs> what do they do now? They just run they around get... with a little flag. They they get, they do get they get pu- involved? They get pushed remember by the, remember, remember the old days when the touchies would run in and, you know, they'd stop the game and say, look, I just saw Victor Radley headbutt somebody. I think that might be warrant to... Yeah. Remember when Gus was a touch touch? Remember when Gus had a touch <laughs> touch? She had Gus back. Huh? The touch is, that, is that what we need? More, I think they though? need... I, well, I think they need more... Uh, their on-field referee, match officials getting more involved. And I think the, the, the NRL have been guilty of, like, drawing their power and control away. So they just defer to the eye in the sky, unless it's like what happened with the Reese Walsh uh, non-try, where they interfere anyway. Mm. So mm. I just think the referees are really confused. And I, I look, I, I get it. I know Alec... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Graham Annesley um, always says that, you know, there's human error involved. I get that, but and I really respect Felix, but that's starting to sound like a little bit of a cop-out because there have been too many funky... Bunker decisions this year. But where that's human error. I get that. He's but right. yeah, but you also you can't just hide behind that all the time. But that's the issue. Yeah, but you can't have you just can't have human errors all the time. But the, but the human errors. I know. <laughs> no, but I know you're yeah. saying this. But is you should job. be a little bit more. Con- you better be a bit more competent. If it's yeah, no, your agree. job, so it's a people human problem. Error. Yeah. Less the people human problems. errors. <laughs> if at your job you were having a, a lot of errors, it wouldn't go down too well. That's no, what we're no, saying. Yeah. You're a human error. Don't you, think, you, don't you think the NRL will be telling the referees when you send it up to the bunker? Don't get it back involved in it. On the back of what we saw last no, night, no, I think it's opening a can of worms. Don't you reckon the NRL are going to? Tell the on, on-field referees. I think they to stay should be of... able if they if you don't hear the comms, like they should be able to collaborate and talk and see what they've seen. You know? I, I, I actually style. feel yeah, I, exactly. I feel sorry for the Get referee, the, right the on-field referee, because it, <laughs> it, it, it does take a lot of their confidence away. That, you know, having someone in your ear over correcting mm. decisions and stuff. I think they need to have a lot more control and we we'll see a little bit less of the bunker. Okay. Um, all right, before we get let you go, let's just quickly get uh, who are the real favourites for State of Origin series. I know the journos love to have favourites. Oh, Queensland. Queensland. Oh, Queensland. Queensland. How can, how can Queensland not be the favourites? They won last year and got a stronger team yep. this year. Absolutely. All right, so yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, these underdogs. No Bucks. pressure, South Billy. Wales are the no underdogs. pressure, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll stay with us here on the Sunday Footy Show because coming up straight after the break, we're going to be talking all things Sunday footy.